Hello and welcome. You're watching our special show, Coronavirus Facts versus Myths. I'm Gargi Rawat. First up, let's get to the latest COVID data that was released by the Health Ministry today. India reported 30,093 new COVID cases in the past 24 hours, which is the lowest in 125 days. That's in over four months. Overall, the country had recorded around 3.12 crore infections and over 4 lakh deaths since the outbreak in January last year. Our deaths in that 24-hour period is 374, which is the lowest in three months. Months. Uh, the daily positivity rate is at 1.68 percent, that's less than 3 percent for 29 consecutive days, and active cases uh, constitute 1.30 percent of the total cases. The weekly positivity rate also remains below 5 percent, which it, it's currently at 2.06 percent. Now, if we take a look at the vaccinations, uh, we have uh, uh, given 41.2 two crore vaccine doses uh, to the public so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. On Monday, India managed to give 52.6 lakh vaccine doses. That's up from Sunday when it was only over 13 lakh. But even at 50 lakh is very low. We need to be vaccinating over 86 to 87 lakh a day to inoculate over 60% of the population by the year end if we're to protect the population and stop uh, the coronavirus from circulating in the population. Well, our first big focus on the show, a nationwide study which was conducted by the Indian Council of Medical Research during the peak of the second wave, that's between April and June, is likely the largest and first nationwide study of the post-vaccination breakthrough infections from India with just 677 clinical samples. So breakthrough infections are, remember, the infections that one gets after receiving both doses of the vaccine. They're called breakthrough infections. So this was a study of 677 breakthrough infections. The subject had received either Bharat Biotech's Covaxin or the Serum Institute of India's version of the Oxford Zeneca vaccine, Covishield. Fewer hospitalizations, just 9.8% and deaths, just 0.4% were reported in the people who experienced a breakthrough uh, infections. This is a preprint study. Now to talk more about this, we're joined by Dr. Sandeep Budhiraja, Group Medical Director, Max Healthcare. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us on the show again. And uh, this study is something that uh, proves uh, something that all of you doctors have been saying, that the COVID uh, vaccines, that if you get both doses, you're protected against severe disease disease and uh, protected against and uh, protected against death that's absolutely right uh, gargi and we have been repeatedly saying that one should not worry about which vaccine one should take uh, one should understand that all the vaccines which are available today are safe and at the same time they give a good efficacy you no know, there's a big controversy around what efficacy means so right. some vaccines like mrna vaccines quote a figure of 95% and some vaccines from india quote a figure of 70-80% but as far as protecting severe disease, preventing hospitalization and preventing deaths, that's our main focus. And I think most of these vaccines do that job very well. And as that's, this study has again proven the same fact that it drastically cuts down on needs for hospitalization and reduces the risk of death to practically as low as less than 0.5% or that as good as zero. Uh, uh, so that number can be 0.5%, 0.8%, 0.4% in different studies. But essentially, that's where the uh, importance is. But at the same time, we must remember, you can still get infected. So right. mild disease is really not prevented uh, by vaccine. And that's where we focus that saying that you still have to be careful, even if you're fully vaccinated. And, and what's interesting here, doctor, is that this uh, study was during the period of the second wave when we know now that the Delta variant was the you know, variant that is uh, uh, probably driving up the numbers. And uh, you, uh, you also conducted a study, uh, Max has been involved in a study about how, you know, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, cases that you saw during the second wave. And uh, we do know that the Delta variant is more infectious. And uh, now we also know that, you know, the vaccines are holding up uh, uh, pretty well against it. There have been other studies in the UK as well on this. Absolutely right. So the variants of concerns which have been labeled by WHO as alpha, beta, you know, delta, gamma. So most of the present vaccines give you protection uh, against these strains. Now that protection may not be exactly the same as that for the original Wuhan strain. But I think again, the emphasis should be do they prevent serious illness from amongst these variants of concern? And answer to that is clearly yes. So presently, we know the third wave, which is ongoing in the world, uh, is predominantly being caused by Delta strain. In some areas, it is Delta plus. Uh, but the good news is that all these vaccines 
seem to be giving a good protection against these mutant strains. So that's something which is very, very positive and something to look forward to. And, and this is one light at the end of the tunnel, which really may be a big thing as far as getting this pandemic to an end is concerned. Right. Now, doctor, there's also been concern about, you know, our rate of vaccinations. Uh, yesterday, our vaccinations were just over 52 lakh uh, doses were given uh, in a single day. On Sunday, it was just uh, over 13 lakh doses that were given. And we do know that we need to be vaccinating at a much higher rate, uh, over uh, 86 lakh a day, you know, even 100 lakh a day uh, to actually reach a, a, a significant coverage of our population by the year end, which is what the government has promised. Absolutely. I think we have to have that target of uh, uh, one crore. Um, uh, if we have to achieve uh, what the government wants to do, that is cover significant uh, adult population by the year end. Because that's where we've been talking about what is herd immunity. Do you ever get herd immunity in this disease? So herd immunity is basically either you get after natural disease, you get immunity or you get through vaccination. And only after a critical mass of population is protected or immune, does this concept of herd immunity come in? And what herd immunity does is to prevent the transmission of the virus and thereby uh, bringing an end to the outbreak. Uh, and I think and in present times, we just can't say that you wait for a natural infection to happen. We do not want that to happen. We want people to get protected. Uh, you know, and, and in fact, in that case, the two things which are most important is supply chain, that is the availability of vaccines, being able to administer those vaccines and I think the third most important critical point, that's the bottom line, uh, is vaccine hesitancy. We must ensure that vaccine hesitancy is taken care of and people understand the importance of this vaccination and do not uh, go and uh, believe the myths uh, which are going around the vaccine. But doctor, the vaccine hesitancy, is this something we're only seeing, you know, in certain pockets of the country? Because overall, it does seem that uh, many people want to get the vaccines in our cities, in, uh, you know, many small towns. People actually want to access vaccines, but they're just not being able to. So that's a very interesting question, uh, Garki. And I think it's a uh, multiple reasons which are contributing to it other than hesitancy is, of course, one reason. The other is, of course, availability of vaccines, which is very erratic. You know, it is available in some sectors. It is not available in some sectors. It is available in some districts. It is not available in some districts. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and third, of course, is I think uh, the, uh, you know, the, the confusion which gets created because of a very frequent change in our uh, policies regarding the frequency, the dosing uh, of vaccination. Uh, out of this, what can be easily addressed, I think, is the third part. You know, you, you stick to one concept and just go by that. Now, you know, Covaxin has a four weeks interval. Covishield started with four weeks, six weeks, then now three months interval. So if we fix one interval, I think for the two standard vaccines and do not sort of change on that, that would be one important thing. Second is educate the masses about the, the effects and the adverse events which could be associated with vaccines with hardcore data. And that data, now we have enough data from Indian studies, which actually should be converted into simple public statements. Right, which and, be and then more flashed. public you know, messaging uh, on this front in various absolutely. languages, uh, you know, for rural parts absolutely. as well. And, and finally, doctor, also we need to increase our vaccine kitty. We've been hearing about Moderna. We've been hoping for more vaccine. Uh, Sputnik has also been approved, but it's not as accessible yet, isn't it? Absolutely. So we should get as many vaccines as is possible. And the third factor is the, the cost part. You know, we keep debating whether cost is a sort of a hindrance. Now, to a large, to, to some se uh, section of population, it is not. But to some section of population, cost may be a hindrance. For them, at least the availability of vaccine through public uh, distribution system should be ensured. The ones who can pay should be referred or should actually go opt for the, the what is available in private healthcare. But there also we are seeing where it is accessible, where people are willing to pay, still we are seeing the slots uh, uh, lying empty. So there has been a gradual reduction in the uptake of vaccinations, even in those places where it is available. So I think we have to have a multi-pronged strategy, but this is the time to act. Otherwise, uh, we just might be too late. Absolutely, especially uh, since there's been all this talk of a possible third way. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor, for joining us on the program. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, now uh, in a related issue, a look at vaccine shortages, something that I was discussing there with uh, Dr. Budhiraja. Now, many parts of the country are experiencing a shortage of vaccine. Several states have spoken out about it, and it is seen as one of the reasons for the low daily vaccination rates. Uh, in fact, let's just uh, bring you these visuals uh, from Madhya Pradesh on Monday. Uh, Madhya Pradesh conducted a major vaccine push on Monday, and it even managed to give uh, 4 lakh 55,496 doses in a single day. But many centers ran out of vaccines. Take a look at these endless long lines in Rajgarh where there are long queues of, of people waiting for vaccinations. Uh, the vaccines finished after a point. There were just 17,000 and after that there was some chaos and then in Dhar uh, district as well at one of the vaccination centers there was a stampede-like situation. Just take a look at those visuals so it doesn't seem like any hesitancy here. In fact, it seems like an over-eagerness for the vaccine and huge crowds are lining up. So clearly all these people do want to get the vaccine and are, you know, wired and want to access it sooner uh, rather than later. So take a look at that stampede-like situation. So long lines and stampede scenes in Madhya Pradesh on Monday. And now uh, to talk more about, you know, a survey on vaccines, uh, local circles conducted a survey to understand uh, uh, more about this uh, shortage that is being spoken of. The survey received a response from 8,931 people across the country. This is across some 278 districts. 65% of the citizens said that they or someone in their close social network could not find a vaccination dose when they went for vaccinations over the last 30 days. This was uh, done, uh, this uh, study came out uh, on the 15th. Well, to talk more about this, we're joined by Sachin uh, Taparia, co-founder and chairman of Local Circle. Thank you so much, Sachin, for joining us. Uh, so tell us about uh, who all was surveyed in, in this uh, particular study that you did and, uh, you know, uh, cities, rural parts, small towns? So, Gargi, this is across the country and we had a good mix of, uh, you know, tier one districts, which is your metros, tier two, tier three, as well as rural districts. Uh, the, the key issue here is that, you know, as you rightly said, 65% of the citizens basically who were surveyed, they said they know one or more individuals in their social network who was not able to get the vaccine in the last 30 days. Now, the same number was at about 70% at the end of May, and it was, you know, 18% at the beginning of April. And of course, you know, the population that was eligible at the beginning of April was a much smaller, you know, number right. of people that were eligible. So as that increased and as, you know, COVID rose in the country through the second wave, uh, at the end of May, everybody, you know, a lot of people wanted to take the vaccine. So slight dip in that. But I think the challenge really that, you know, we are sensing from from when we read comments of individuals who were not able to get the vaccine is basically you know one there is a supply issue from the back end you know where supply is coming into a particular state or a particular district the second issue is a local logistics issue where you know within a 100 kilometer radius basically you have certain centers who have excess supply and certain centers which are stocked out basically so I think that is something that has got okay. to be figured out, which is, you know, the entire logistics management, which is can we forecast, you know, how much, you know, inflow or how much footfall are we going to get in a particular location versus, you know, a location, let's say, that is 20 kilometers away. So I think there is a logistical problem that's to be solved, along with, of course, the supply issues, you know, they have to be sorted, getting as many And did you find any possible. difference between men and women that you surveyed in, in terms of, uh, you know, what they had to say and uh, eagerness for the vaccine? You know, so this was more around vaccine shortage. We have sure. a separate survey that, that we have done around vaccine hesitancy, Gargi. And according to our estimates, you know, there is still about 16 crore citizens in this country, adults, that are vaccine hesitant per our latest survey. So out of the 94 crore total population, about 16 crore is still vaccine hesitant. And, you know, a host of reasons in terms of, you know, why people don't want to take the vaccine, ranging from, you know, I'm waiting for, the, for, for better vaccines to come. I'm waiting to see whether, you know, these variants will, will get resolved with this current vaccine or I have a medical condition because of which I cannot take the vaccine. So a host of reasons and a very small percent saying, no matter what, I'm not going to take the vaccine. 
All right, so that's interesting because uh, on one hand, you have people, you know, 65% of the people you surveyed know somebody who couldn't get the vaccine and wanted to get vaccinated. Uh, but at the same time, this is something that is being talked about, how in certain parts and certain, you know, segments, uh, you do have people who are hesitant. But uh, the main reason right now for the, you know, uh, low daily vaccine numbers seems to be uh, the supply problem. Right, absolutely. And, you know, I think this is where what we have got to do is... is of course, address the supply problem, address the local logistics problem, but then also, like you know, Dr. Budhiraja was saying, and you were saying earlier, we have got to sensitize and and you know have awareness drives. So that way, come October, you know, if this hesitancy of 16 crore, what we estimate prevails, you know, till then, then right. the entire vaccination drive will slow down, where we we may have enough vaccines but not enough takers. So I think there's some proactive action that needs to be taken in there. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sachin Taparia, for joining us on the program. Yeah. Well, let's now take a look at some of the international news around the COVID and vaccines. And fully vaccinated U.S. citizens can enter Canada from the 9th of August, while other travelers can enter from the 7th of September. Our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeted, as of September 7th, fully vaccinated people from any country can come into Canada for non-essential travel at every step. The safety of Canadians will continue to be our top priority. Foreign travelers entering Canada need to present proof of a vaccines that have been approved and authorized in Canada. That means two doses of either Pfizer, Moderna or AstraZeneca or one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. However, Covaxin is not on that list. The UK government has warned that there will be an increase in COVID deaths over the coming weeks. Remember, uh, UK has, uh, England has opened up and uh, done away with all restrictions. Patrick Valance, a chief scientific officer, said the country is seeing an increase in the number of deaths, but at a much lower level. We are seeing an increase in the number of deaths, but at a much, much lower level. But they again will continue to increase as infections increase and will be expected to reach over 100 possibly uh, a lot over 100, but, but we'll see an increase in deaths over the next few weeks as the infections rise, but at a much lower level again because of the protection of vaccination. Now for our special campaign, Vaccinate India in partnership with Google, where we uh, bring you frequently asked questions about COVID, about vaccines, questions that uh, a lot of you often Google. And joining us to answer those questions is Dr. Rajesh Parekh, a Director of Medical Research at Slok Hospital, Mumbai. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. And one of the questions that uh, people are uh, looking up a lot is how long does it take to develop immunity after the COVID vaccine? Hi, Gargi. Uh, that's uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, the general consensus across the world, across different vaccines, is on an average, it's about two to three weeks. But I think it's important for us to realize that when we talk of a mean or an average of two to three weeks, it means that there are people on either side of that average. There are some people who might uh, develop it in as little as a week. On the other hand, there are people who might even need a month. And so I think as a rule of thumb, uh, we advise people to consider that the immunity will come in after a month. That way, they are playing it really safe. Right. And even once you're completely vaccinated, doctor, it's, it's important to continue, you know, being careful because it doesn't mean you're 100% protected. Absolutely. And I think as you indicated a few minutes ago in the ICMR survey, that while it does offer you protection, considerable protection, I might add, against uh, developing serious illness. Uh, very few people develop serious illness. It doesn't give you total protection against getting infected and moreover, passing on that infection to other people. In fact, we're going to come to that question. And just one more uh, uh, question I wanted to ask you about this issue of immunity is also how long does it take for the immunity to wane? Because that's become the focus now with many people <laughs> yeah. having been vaccinated uh, for several months and, uh, you know, this immunity erosion. Yeah, Gargi, I knew you're going to have a tough question, <laughs> starting with the easy ones first. But, you know, that's something we don't really know because we're chasing the virus. We are learning as we go along. What we do know this far is about six to months. It might be longer. And just two days ago, there was uh, a bit of illumination indicating that it may even be lifelong, at least with one of the mRNA vaccines. Uh, I wouldn't bet on that, though. 
All right. So another question that people look up a lot and something you just mentioned is, can a vaccinated person give COVID to unvaccinated person? Uh, yes. However, that's a more nuanced question. By and large, minimally. So there is some degree of protection about transmitting the virus, but that depends and varies, in fact, from vaccine to vaccine, from mutant variant to mutant variant. We know there are the alpha, beta, gamma, delta uh, variants, and for each of them, it's a little different. It also depends on the individual. And as you illustrated a little while ago, it also depends on herd immunity. It's important for us to realize that only 6% of our country is fully vaccinated. The others are partially vaccinated, about 29%, but right. uh, that number is low. So we are a long while away from it. And, uh, and you know, the other thing that bothers me, Gargi, is I just noticed in some of the visuals you showed that uh, people are standing very close to each other and a lot of them are unmasked. Uh, I saw the stampede that you showed. And this has happened in other countries where the vaccination sites actually became super spreaders. So I think it's happened here as well vaccinated. during the second wave. I think a lot of people uh, got uh, COVID when they went to vaccination centers and, you know, not enough care was taken, as you pointed out. So that's very, very important, Garki, when we're talking about the spread of the infection. Overall, the news is all good. All right. So uh, it, uh, the vaccinated person can give COVID uh, to the unvaccinated. But currently, uh, the worry is about the rate of vaccinations in the country. And that's something that we want to improve, especially if we're trying to ward off uh, a possible third wave, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, totally undeniable. Uh, so just to come back to what you kind of raised along with this, it's very important for vaccinated people for their own sakes and for the sakes of other people to continue with all the precautions, particularly the masking. And yes, of course, uh, we have to press the accelerator on the vaccination program across the world in the current pandemic. And historically, it's been unequivocally demonstrated that that's the one thing that works. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor, for joining us on the program. Uh, thank you, Gargi. Thank you.